In this series, I'll be walking through replicating a stock for a military rifle. If you've seen my channel before, you may have seen my Norwegian Crack Restoration series, where I documented making a stock from scratch to restore a sporterized rifle. This series is a bit different. There I started filming partially through, I didn't cover the wood selection or the inletting, which are the foundations to a rifle stock. This series will be from the very start to the finish, and this first video will be the stock selection, layout, and rough cutting. I'd like to start by covering what to look for in a blank. It takes a lot of hours to make a stock, so you don't want to cut any corners here. Stock planks, those sort of rifle-shaped pieces of wood you may find for sale, are a good start. However, they're usually highly figured wood for high-end custom rifles. For a military stock, you really want something with straight grain, since that's how stock planks were selected originally, for strength and not looks. So I went down to my local hardwood supplier and found a piece of 8 quarter, meaning 2 inches thick, walnut. I looked through the racks for straight grain, checking the planed face, edges, and the skin planed reverse side. What wood species depends on what you're trying to replicate. If you don't know, Walnut is a good choice, but sometimes rifle stocks are made from something else, like maple or cherry. Walnut is great to work with, so that's a plus there too. I mentioned straight grain, and the best way to ensure straight grain is to get quarter sawn wood. Quarter sawn wood has the rings going across the thickness of the board, rather than plain sawn which has the grain running across the width. The ends of the rings on quarter sawn wood show on the face of the board, resulting in straight grain down its length. The downside to it is that quarter sawn wood is a lot more expensive and may not be available. And that's my case here. I just couldn't find quarter sawn walnut thick enough, so I found a plain sawn board which has relatively straight grain. In addition, there's no knots or voids, at least none that I can see, and the board is mostly heartwood the darker in and rings of walnut. Lastly, make sure that you get something oversized. I have a couple inches in length and width to play with. I say this is 8 quarters thick, but if your stock is exactly 2 inches wide, maybe buy the next thickness up. This is the stock I'm going to be replicating. It's a US Crag Model 1898. I have an extra barreled action that I've shown in a couple of past videos that I want to get shooting. On its stock here, you can see the straight grain on the butt stock. There's no figure or imperfections like knots in the wood. With the stock removed from the rifle, I'll place it on the board and angle it so the muzzle faces downward slightly. This is because I want the grain to be running down the wrist of the stock. Recoil is going to be transmitted from the action down to the butt stock to your shoulder. The weakest area between those two points is the wrist, so having the grain running down in that direction is essential for durability. And with that in mind, I can move the stock around on the board, keeping that muzzle down angle. Remember that the resulting stock is somewhere in the middle of this board, so try to think about what the grain looks like inside. You can get an idea from the face and the edge grain. The buttstock, being the widest part, is where the grain is the most visible, so I'm trying to keep it straight in that area, both for strength and appearance reasons. Once I'm satisfied with the layout, I'll draw an outline around the stock, making sure to keep my pencil vertical. For stocks like this, where the two sides are different, make sure to capture the larger side. I'll use a ruler to mark the top of the fore end 
because I want that section to be straight for layout purposes later on. To make the outline show up better on video, I'll go over it with a Sharpie. Don't forget the hand guard as well. Here it's easier to measure the height and the length needed and then draw it on instead of tracing. On this I want the grain to be straight, not angled downwards like the fore end of the stock. Once everything is marked, double and triple checked, it's time to rough cut. I'm using a bandsaw, but you can also use a jigsaw or even a handsaw to cut it out. Everywhere except for the straight top edge, I'm going to cut oversized by about a quarter inch so there's enough material for shaping later on. I also like to leave the ends long so that I can cut them to the exact length after inlighting the action. I had put the handguard too close to the stock, so I'll redraw it and then cut. And there's the rough cut blank. I'll move it to the vise and use a hand plane to get the top surface perfectly flat. This will give me a solid reference surface to gauge off of for both inletting and exterior shaping later on. I also want to get it square to the plain face of the board, which is the opposite side from here. Here you can see there's a gap on the far side, meaning the edge closest needs to be planed down.
Now with the top edge of the stock plank being both flat and square, this and the plain side will provide two solid reference surfaces upon which later inletting and shaping are based. And that's it for now. Next video will be the inletting. I'm not sure if that will be split up into one or two parts since it's quite a tedious process. Thanks for watching.